Hello. Today I want to do something more simple, more straightforward. There will be a little bit of vex. I just wanted to, just a very quick test just to show you that you can have a lot of fun with the most basic vex or like math formulas. Um, yeah, uh, this is just a single sine wave that's been applied to a circle on the X and Y and then rotated and then has a bunch of clones in it. But the idea is pretty straightforward. So I just want to quickly show you how to do a very basic thing. Um, in terms, like it, it looks cool, but it's it's a very clean and simple idea. Uh, which is just take this cir a circle and rotate. It. Uh, let's let's put it on a flat plane so it kind of lives there and nice and two dimensionally. Uh, let's make it a polygon, which does, uh, ZX is fine. I'm going to give it a lot of divisions just so that we have a lot of points to work with, uh, split pane up top bottom so that we can actually see the geometry spreadsheet. All right. So we got a bunch of points. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, oh, maybe we can use a closed arc. I'll explain why in a second, uh, basically just. Actually, no, I'll explain now. Uh, we have a point of reference in the middle. It's a closed arc, which is in the beginning, uh, starts with zero. We could use it as a point of reference to the middle of the circle. Um, I'm just uh start. I'm gonna use an attribute wrangle. And what I'd like to do is make a little bumpy wave. Um, actually, yeah, let's. Let's make it even simpler. I will remove the point in the middle. So I'm going to put a blast down in the middle and set it to points. And just take off. I can't grab it. Oh, put it on points mode. There we go. Delete the one in the middle. So let's just quickly make this thing, make this thing go on a little sine wave. So we have the position values. So we could directly affect them. So we can say position plus equals sine, I don't know, over time and time, which would probably make a slide to this, to, yeah. So if I do that, then it's moving in the X and the Y and the Z at the same time with a little time offset. Like I can just clip it to the X, for example. Uh, so now it's moving back and forth. And if you want to know why the sign moves back and forward, it's high school kind of math stuff that like we all forgot about. But basically, it sine is like a little wave. If you give sine zero, then it's zero. If you give sine a the value one, and by give it I mean put it in the brackets, uh, which will end up here. Actually, yeah, let's say it's here. If you if you end if you put one into the sign, it'll back, end up back at zero. If you put zero point five in the sign, it's gonna go to one. It's actually going up, down, up, down. So zero, one, two, three. So zero, zero, one at zero, two at zero. But point five, it goes to one, and one point five goes to negative one. So that's what it does. It moves left and right. Now we can use that to mess with the uh, individual points. Uh, like we let's work on the Y, for example. So if I use sine plus Y, it's going to move the whole thing up and down. But we kind of want to move the individual points up and down. I mean, we are, but like not we're, we're moving them as a unit right now, but we can go and ask them individually. So previously I was creating percentages based off the points over the total amount of points. So like here we got 150 points. We don't, we have the numbers one to, actually no, we have 50 points. We have the numbers to 150 here. And we kind of want to use that to make a percentage value. Like, you know, this is 0%, 25 would be like, you know, 50%. So we can do that. So I can go float percent equals at pt num, which is saying the point number, over at num pt, which is the built-in value for all the points. I can test this. I can go at test, 
equals percent. And it's going to give you zero because both of these values are integers and you're dividing integers by integers. So that's not good. So you can cast as a float. And there we go. Now it actually becomes a percentage value. Okay, we have the percent. Next thing, uh, the way we have time here, we can use we can use the percent instead of the time, which starts giving us funky values. It does kind of do what you know. I'm, I'm just describing. It gives a one and a zero return. Uh, <clears throat> The points are zero to 50 or 49. And usually what you do when you do a percentage based value based off the point number is either you remove one from the number of points because the rate starts at zero. Um, this is just like a, a good standard practice. This way you can see that the percentages actually end up at one. It's not just zero, like if I didn't do this, there is no act like nothing's gonna end up at one. It's all gonna end up at like 0 0.9999. So let's go negative one. Okay, now we have a final value. All right, so uh what can we do with this? So now it's doing this, but it's not exactly looping, is it? It's it's kind of going up. It's not really it's not really working to, in our favor to make a perfect loop. Uh, so we can use the way you would make a, a lot of circle functions, which is to convert this into, um, a radial, um, a radiant, uh, which is multiplied by two multiplied by pi, which makes the radian. And then multiply by the frequency, uh, which, you know, we can use like two, three. So what the frequency is, is this, this, this is the frequency. And over here, there's like a lot of frequency and this is less frequency. Um, and frequency is an integer. So like as an example, I can, I can pass this on as a channel so you can use a slider. Uh, there we go. One, two, so there you go. And one, it's flat, a zero is flat. At one, it's a straight line. It's eventually going to curve, but probably not going to curve anytime soon. Two, three, and it can get really crazy. So I don't know, let's leave it two. And it's doing like a very sharp turn up and down. So like, let's, let's also multiply it by channel float scale. So we can reduce the scale. There we go. Nice and soft. So you've got percentage times frequency times scale. So we could like from here on in, we can really mess with this. So like we could, for example, add the percent to make a little offset. So I can add percent, I can add time to the percent. So now the percent is actually changing with time, which means that like at one point this is the this is the first in the queue then the next one is the next one in the queue so all the math starts changing as the as the first value of the sine wave changes and it just but it still stays within the the, the range because we've converted it into radians and it, the frequency is the same and the scale is the same um we can add a little bit of noise um or uh, even more modification so in my example, I added another sine wave of time, which will go plus plus negative one, uh, which can really go crazy. Okay, let's 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 make it a little bit less crazy. Let's uh, add a time modifier because right now it's uh, this thing is changing, so it's moving in a circle, moving in a circle, and I'm adding a secondary wave. Sometimes, like sometimes, it 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 adds even more on top of that. Anyway, this is just using uh, a single sine wave to create a lot of really fun fun functions. Now you can keep working in Vex, but like you don't really need to. You can you can use a cloner. You can use a for loop. Um, like I can first of all, let me use an add node to get rid of this. 
these um, the fill. And let me make a line by selecting polygons by group. Uh, so now I got an outline, which is great. Now I got a little outline. You know what? This is getting really crazy. Let me just uh, slow it down a little bit. Um, let's make it 10 by 2. There we go. All right. So we got a little time effect. Instead of using Bex for everything on the planet, uh, I'm just going to use a copy node. Uh, yeah, copy. So now with the copy note, you don't really need to work on like a like I can directly say I want to have 17 copies, you know, 10, and then let's we can give it like a little offset. Um, so now I got 10 of these things, which is great. I can even uh, I can add more um, random like I can I can put signs right in here, so I can add more random random. So like I can go sign a frame which is really gonna go crazy let me reduce the amount of crazy uh no too crazy uh, let's make it that much mm. yeah yeah i'll get back to that so yeah i can add that i can i can rotate it so i can i can uh Make a little rotation offset. And of course, you can stick sign it here too. Add the frame. And that would give you. I'd like to make it more, more obvious. Well, I'm going to multiply it by 10. So now there's like a little rotation happening in the middle. It's not just static. Uh, I'm going to apply it to all, all the, the, the rotates. Uh, I'm just going to refresh the viewport. Uh, and yeah, and if you want, you can even well, change the, you know, the, the height of this thing. So I can stick a sine wave in here too. Uh, okay, that's going really hard, high. Um, let's make it point 0.2. Let's make it plus point 0.2. Yeah, this way it only it only goes up. It doesn't actually go down all the time. Um, but yeah. You can, you can keep messing with this for hours if you want to, uh, and make a little makeshift slinky. Um, but yeah, this is just, oh, if you want to be like, oh, how do I make this into a geo? You can use a sweep node and the sweep node can be set to like a tube and now it's a geometry node. So now you can actually render this thing, but yeah, this is just very basic, but also it's very useful to work off just some basic anim sign way of animation to give like so for example if you had like um like a character that has hair and it's waving you can add like a tiny bit of sine wave into the wave uh it like it lets the waves align and add a little bit of noise in yeah you can do a lot of stuff that is just pluses using a little wave here and there and yeah Hopefully this is helpful in any way. I hope that my videos so far have been useful to at least some of you. And yeah, let me know if you want me to like give any more specific examples of anything that's Houdini based or not. Um, as long as it's do with the animation. Yeah. Thanks for your time.